Hey guys, welcome to my level. This is Train Wreck. The goal of this level is to hunt down the terrorists who have boarded the train and stop them before they reach its uh, town. So the idea with this level is that it's Call of Duty inspired. Uh, you start out in the hospitality suite of a train. Um, and as you go along, you'll be tasked with stopping enemies like this one who jumps out at you. Uh, this door was a combination of a timeline blueprint script uh, as well as um, spawning the enemy AI and then uh, telling the AI to move to that location so it looks like it's jumping out at you and kind of gives you a quick intro to the level. Um, and you you know before that you kind of have this chill passive thing and then you just get jumped on. You feel like you're kind of in the action in the moment. And uh, that preps you for the next part, which the next room had a gun in it. You picked that up and now you're here. About to go into the second train cart. Uh, a lot of these enemy AI are... Uh, I wanted to place them kind of sporadically. They're a bit too sporadic right now. This is something I'm going to fix in the next iteration of this one. Um, whereas they, their detection radius is not quite picking you up when you walk in the door. Um, so uh, for this, there's a key here. This key door turns from yellow to green whenever you pick up the key and insert it. There's a sniper by the door so you can pick off this guy on the ledge and uh, watch his body ragdoll off the side. Um, there's a ladder here, simple ladder script that came with uh, the plugins. Um, and then you can snipe the rest of these. And as you have, uh, you'll see now there's this helicopter in the distance. This actually was a trigger box that was triggered at the beginning whenever you climbed up the ladder. It drops off two troops as you can see down there. And it does a whole fly around to the side. Um, and so you can pick off this, these troops with a sniper that you picked up earlier. Or you can keep going and they'll attack you later. Uh, depending on uh, basically uh, what you decide to do here. This ledge, you're meant to see, walk up to the ledge and then think about jumping down beforehand. There is a red light indicating that this door is not open. Which should tell you that you need to jump across. But if you don't jump across, there's a ladder there for to help you get back up as well. Um, and there are ladders on each of the sides of the trains in case you jump to either side of the train. Um, when you jump down here, another trigger box, uh, you know, you jumped onto. And this spawns an enemy here, um, enemies in the next train cart, and enemies above in the upper decker parts of these train carts as well. Um, these enemies are uh, basically, they, they seek you out immediately um, if they're in your train cart. Um, yeah. So this is kind of like this cross-platform thing. If you jump down, there's a door behind you to help you get back. These uh, bartender uh, enemies, um, their detection radius, once again, it's kind of like a, a universal next thing I need to solve problem uh, where these guys kind of don't aggro you as far as I'd like them to. So I'm going to increase their radius a little bit and hope that fixes the problem. Uh, here, so we have this canyon. This is clearly where the train split. If you fail the jump, you just get respawned right behind you. Uh, it's made with a plane, um, basically an invisible plane. Uh, you can see it in the editor, but you can't see it in game. I took, turned off uh, render in game for these objects. They're just planes. Uh, if you, your body makes contact with them, they teleport you to a set location, which happens to be that train cart. Um, and yeah, this is kind of like a stealth part of the level. You, The first guy you can attack uh, naturally, or you can choose to hide behind these boxes and kind of sneak up on them. And then you kind of get pushed out of here. Here's where the clear explosion happened in the train that broke the bridge. Um, and so this uh, cart's kind of rubble. It's destroyed. This is actually made using um, the chaos system, which is inherent to Unreal. Uh, this guy kind of gets stuck in the wall. He's two times as large as normal, so it does kind of create some issues with his spawning. But the chaos system fractures this building on run time. Um, so I actually have two ways that I've went about this. This is another plane we're about to walk into. Sorry, I uh, just teleport you back. But um, So the first one is the bridge. Um, and that I, I had that uh, basically split into parts with the chaos system. But what I did was um, essentially run a cache on that and then take where the pieces of the bridge lo were located and create static meshes out of them. Um, and then I converted the, basically, because the bridge, whenever you break it in chaos, it only remains as one static mesh. So if you try to pick up like individual parts, even though they look like they're split, they're not individual parts. They are still one big part of the bridge. And so you can move that bridge around as one object, but you can't move the individual parts. 
So I create, I, I basically did a cache. Um, I played the animation or I, you know, the bridge splitting into parts. And then I saved that cache. And at the end of the cache, I was able to split them into static meshes from that. The collapsed train cart here at the end that we're looking at, this is actually on runtime, just the basic chaos system. So there's two ways that I did this in this uh, one level instance. Um, and this one, uh, I did not cache it. So these are not individual static meshes. If you took one of these crumbling parts, you would move the entire train. Um, but I was having issues where it would actually, let me see if I can reverse this video here. It would actually, um, the, the crumbling parts would stop you. They would land on top of this ladder right here to the right. And basically they would make this part inaccessible. So shout out Ben here. Ben had the idea of putting an invisible block, a cube right here, that actually prevents it from falling over this way and only and basically forces it to move this way, which allowed us to always have this path clear. And then I did something similar, uh, kind of similar for this section right here to make it so that you would always have a clear path right here. Um, and that way, every time you play the game, uh, you have at least one means of traversal to the end. So yeah, that's my level. Thank you for watching.